Okay, sorry guys, technical difficulties. Um, I live out in the country, so sometimes when it's raining outside, the internet gets a little, little crazy. So just to reiterate, my job on the team is the listing specialist. So if you don't know what a listing specialist is, my job is to help sellers sell their homes. We have buyer specialists on the team that specialize with all of our um, buyers, um, and I specialize with all of our sellers. So my job First off, um, to start the entire you know listing process, the first step of the listing process is obviously to have a conversation about your motivation, what your goals are, where you're wanting to move to, um, and talk about you know your house that you're wanting to sell, and then schedule an appointment for me to come out, which is what I'm doing later this afternoon. I'm going out to a new listing um, to have a conversation, you know, with potential clients. Um, get a tour of their house. And then when I'm done there, it usually takes about 30 minutes to an hour. It just depends on the person and how much, you know, we talk about. Um, once we're done with that, then I come back to my office and run numbers. So what I mean about running numbers is I look at um, your house specifically. Um, let's just say you have 3,000 square feet. You were built in 2016. You live on five acres. I'm taking your house and comparing it to other homes that have sold recently in your area. Um, so let's just say like me, for instance, I live in Moreland. So I am looking at houses that have sold specifically in Moreland um, that are comparable to my square footage and comparable to age. Oh, what is this? Cassie's requesting to be in the video. Anywho, so I'm finding... What are you doing? Did you know you're in my video? Okay, so uh, just so you know, that was Cassie Roberts. She's my listing manager. Um, we uh, have fun together. So sometimes <laughs> we joke with each other and it looks like she was trying to bomb my video. Uh, but you'll see more of Cassie next week. She will be here next Tuesday to talk about her role as our listing manager, she's kind of my right hand man. Um, but sometimes we have to make it fun. So I don't really think that she knew that she was joining my video. Um, but anywho, so back to, you know, how I run my numbers, I look at what is most comparable to your house. Um, as far as, you know, recent sales. So I really look at what's been selling in the past three to six months. I really don't like to go any further back. I really don't like to go six months because the market is ever changing. So we like to look at what has sold most recently. So with us being in March, I really only like to go back maybe November, December, um, just because the market has changed since then. So it really just depends on what's going on with the real estate market. Um, so we look at, you know, your recent sales, cause that's, what's going to dictate the value, what could potentially be what your house could appraise for. And then we're going to look at what's currently on the market. Cause that's what your competition is going to be. So let's just say your house is valued at 300, but you have some of your competition here that is listed at 305, 310. And they may have received a few offers already. So we may bump up that price a little bit just to kind of see, you know, what we can get because it is a um, very demanding market right now. We have very low inventory. I think when I checked the hot sheet this morning, as far as active homes on the market, this is single family detached. So that means, you know, houses that aren't attached to each other, no commercial, you know, anything like that. In Coweta County, I want to say that we had maybe 220 five to 26, something like that. So just to kind of, you know, give you some insight when I got into real estate uh, about 10 years ago, we had over a thousand houses on the market. So right now it is a seller's market. Um, so my job is obviously to have that conversation with sellers, let them know how demanding this market is right now. And you can really get, um, you know, what you want to a certain extent, we do have to keep appraisal in mind. So again, I know I'm kind of going on a tangent right now, but again, my job is to give you the value of your home, tell you what you could potentially sell it for, and then give you an idea of how much you could potentially profit. So I give you what I call a net seller sheet, which goes over different offer scenarios, what a buyer could potentially ask for. It's mostly a worst case scenario.
numbers on a house that I went to yesterday. Um, it's in a subdivision. It's in Noonan, so it's going to be pretty. I don't want to say easy, but it's going to be pretty easy to um, you know run numbers. So first thing is when a house is in a subdivision, I look at what's been selling in that subdivision. If I can't find anything that's been selling in that subdivision, I go outside of the subdivision to a neighboring subdivision that's comparable. The property like me, I live in Moreland, so it's very difficult to find property, especially in Moreland. The first thing I do is I take radiuses around the property. So when it's a house in the country, you're taking radiuses, you know, around that house. So first you go one mile radius, two mile radius, three mile radius. Um, and then if I can't find anything, then I just look in that city. Like Moreland is not a big area. So I look in that area. If I still can't find anything, then we're looking at school districts. So I run my numbers just like an appraiser runs their numbers. Um, I don't do price per square foot. I feel like it gets very skewed when you do price per square foot, just because you can't really compare a house that has no upgrades to, you know, a lot of upgrades by price per square foot. So I run my numbers very exact and just like appraisers do. So I make adjustments. So if I have a house that's 3000 square feet and I'm comparing it to a house that sold that only had 2,500 square feet, then I'm adding value to our house. The, the subject property is what we call it. I'm adding value to that. Um, so I run my numbers that way because I know that that's what appraisers do. And I actually look at appraisal reports and see what appraisers are giving as far as adjustments go. So just know that I don't just come up with numbers out of my head. This is all based off of research that I do. Um, I want to be the knowledge for you guys. You know, if you do decide, you know, to sell your house, I want to be that knowledge for you guys. I want you guys to know that when I run your numbers, it's pretty spot on. Um, it can be skewed, you know, just a little bit because every appraiser is different. Some use different adjustments than others. But just know that I want to be your knowledge for you. When I'm sitting down with you guys, I want to know what your motivation is. And I want to be able to help you to get to where you want to be. So enough on my tangent. I feel like I've been going on, you know, for a while. Um, but I'm going to go and run some numbers on this property that I saw yesterday. Um, I'm not going to, you know, go into too much more detail, but I'm going to look at, you know, that's comparable, you know, to this house as far as upgrades, age, square footage, that sort of stuff. Um, and then I'll send over those numbers to that seller. Once that seller reviews all the information, they will call me. We'll discuss because it is a lot of information that I'm sending to you guys, but I want to make sure you understand it. Um, we'll discuss and then we'll decide time frame. So we'll decide when you're wanting to list. Um, if we're not listing, like if you have to do a few repairs to the property and we're not listing for another, you know, three weeks, we'll look at these numbers again and just make sure that they haven't changed and that we're pretty spot on when we do decide to list. So that's kind of some information as to how my listing process goes, but stay tuned. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can send me a message. I am following along with all of our messages. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Also, ooh. This is a good idea. If you have any questions that you want me to answer, I will come back on and answer those questions for you. Um, so anyway, I hope everybody has a great morning and I will talk to you soon.